a, a few first timers. We've got a few people coming in for the first time today. And thanks again to Claire Ho for providing these online workshops for us. So for people who weren't with us last, last week, Claire's an accredited practicing dietitian and founder of the nutrition practice Four Seasons Dietetics. Uh, she also works as a clinical dietitian at the SAN in Wollonga. And during her career, Claire's given presentations on behalf of organizations such as Cancer Council, Nutrition Australia, the Baker Hut and uh, Diabetes, Diabetes Institute uh, to raise awareness of healthy eating. Her philosophy is that optimal health requires a holistic and constant, uh, constantly evolving approach. You will have received the information package by email with the welcome letter from Claire, the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating brochure, the supermarket shopping hints, and Guide to Setting Smart Goals and Recipe Cards for Our Cooking Day. If you'd like, like printed copies of these, just email me and I'll get those to you in the next week or so. We're not going into the office very often, but when we do, we can send those out. So as before, you're welcome to ask questions during the presentation. Just wave your hand before you do so, so that Claire can respond to each person. And there'll be more time for questions at the end of the presentation. So I think we're good. And over to you, Claire. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome if it's your first session with us. And hello again. I see familiar faces from last week. So hi again. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. So everyone should see the PowerPoint slides. Yeah. So this last week, um, a bit of a recap, we did go through kind of serving sizes, the food groups, what types of things we need to include in our diet. Um, if you didn't join us last week, the information pack does give you a bit of information on those different food groups, serving sizes, and what do you require for your age group and gender. This week, we're going a bit more specific in terms of um, nutrition considerations. But before I do that, I did set a bit of homework for those who did join us last week on setting yourself a goal. So I'd like to hear how did we go with that and any challenges or any comments in general? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, and yes. <laughs> So Franco, uh, I, what was your goal last my week? My goal was to uh, um, lose half a kilo and eat two pieces of fruit a day. <laughs> but I, I won't be able to see that for a few days, I suppose. Yes. Mm. Did you manage to do the two fruits a day? Yes, I did. Only, only for I'm, I'm only I only set these these goals on Monday, so it's not very not a very long. <laughs> Uh, that's all right but, sounds but like still it's, uh, it's you're, you're in progress it sounds good it started i suppose yes how about Anne? and uh, mine was more um hydration so i am trying to i've got my water and i'm putting some um lemon or orange or a bit of mint just to make it nicer yeah. so i just have my glass <laughs> and i top it up um my herbal teas i have some but not too many um, I tend to like more El Grey, which is probably not a herbal one. Um, and I think the exercise, I mainly just walk in. I haven't been doing enough stretches. So that's something I need to do for next week. Good. Sounds good. How about mm. Elizabeth? And how did you guys go? You're on mute, I think. If you're able to, do you know how to unmute yourself? I tried to be more aware of the salt content. Yeah. Of, of the different things and the ones that I've already got that are not salt reduced so that I will endeavor when I'm shopping again to choose those items that have low salt. Good, very so good. That's important for us. Anybody else like to share? I think Irene, you were with us last week. Yeah, I am. How did you go? <laughs> didn't change much <laughs> didn't change much that's all right just something to another goal you can set for yourself this week <laughs> anybody else like to share yes that it's, be, it's very hard to change lifetime habits yes you yeah. know like snacking late at night which is a big problem for me um you know you get hungry before going to bed i'll have a glass of milk and i'll have something with it which i shouldn't but it's very hard to change that habit, but I'm trying. 
Yeah, I think I checked, uh, it's easy to um, break habits. It's very hard to build habits. So this is like mm. a lifelong and sustainable thing you need to do in the long run. Oh, we have a few more other people joining us. Hello, everyone who's joining us. I have, I have, a, I have the same problem as the last lady because <laughs> I like to be cleaned up. My, I get asthma from um, cooking fumes and washing up fumes and all of that, and I like to eat, have my dinner all cleared up by about 6 o'clock, and I'm really hungry before I go to bed at about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And if I don't eat, I... I wake up during the night hungry with gnawing feeling in my stomach. And so I'd like you to, and if I only have something, like I have to have something substantial about half an hour or an hour before I go to bed. Otherwise, I have this problem. So I, if you could address that, you know, before bed supper would be yeah. good for me because um, that's when I'm inclined to go for something that might be, uh, you know, I'm gluten intolerant, so gluten-free fruit cake, or um, I, I, I got the crackers out, and then I thought, oh, these Escal crackers, um, they're a nice size, and almost the size of a, a gluten-free slice of bread, but they, um, they're full of salt, and I think, oh, I don't really want to be eating this much salt, because one's not enough, and I put peanut, smooth peanut butter or something substantial on it or some lactose-free cheese. I think I shouldn't be having this cholesterol before sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's some goals you kind of want to set yourself here. I think there's a few things that you can take from today's session that hopefully can assist with your late night supper. Yeah. All right. Good. So it sounds like we've done a bit of progress. Maybe some of us needs to keep working on it, but that's all right. But that's what this is all about. We keep working on it and we refine and um a lot of things we can do with our diet so a bit of summary of what we're going to talk about today three things um it's quite um a lot of information today so feel free to stop me and ask me to clarify anything i talk about first thing we will might talk about bone health um whether you're getting enough calcium as well as if you're vegetarian or you don't eat dairy how do you get enough for your bone health considerations for arthritis as well as your bowel health as well. All right, so with your bone health, why is it important? Um, there are three things we need to consider, consider when doing um, having really good diet for bone health. It improves your energy levels to reduce fatigue. It reduces your risk of falls as well as reduces your risk of illnesses and infections. So other than a healthy, balanced diet, having uh, foods that can support this is very important as well. So something that we need to think about in bone health other than the calcium or vitamin D in our diet is, are we getting enough protein? Because the muscle in our body is filled with protein as they're building blocks. So it wraps around our bones to keep ourselves strong, reduce fatigue and prevent falls. Um, so some food sources of protein include your common meats, poultry and eggs, but also things like legumes, milk and dairy products, as well as nuts and seeds. So Beverly, when you did mention about um, feeling hungry for a long time um, in the late into the night, protein is actually very good to keep you satisfied for longer. So if you find that mm. even after your dinner meal, you're still feeling a bit hungry, you want something to sustain you throughout the night, having a protein um, kind of snack might be very useful. So in this case, it could be something like a yogurt, um, a nice cheese and crackers that you might have, um, a boiled egg, if that's something you fancy, or even a handful of mixed nuts Thank you. Yes. as well. Thank you for the reminder. No worries. I remember, I remember, I remember years ago, one specialist said, you have a, a little bit of, um, you have some tin or else cook up some, um, uh, I'd forgotten about this, cook up some mince uh, and have a little bit of mince or tin fish before you go to bed. And I'd forgotten all about that till you said about <laughs> protein. Yeah, we learn so much. Sometimes we yeah. just need a bit of a refresher. Yeah. 
That's right. Thank you. Okay. So a bit of a question to everyone. So what do you think contains the most calcium in this slide here? Mm. So we have our tofu, we have cow's milk, we have canned salmon, which often contains the salmon bones as well. Um, two slices of light cheese, 15 almonds, or a, a calcium fortified plant-based milks, for example, like a soy milk. <laughs> Maybe the almonds, almonds would have quite a bit. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I'd say the salmon. Someone or say the, the salmon? Or, or yeah. the cheese, cheese or the tofu. Cheese or the tofu? <laughs> you should okay. have two bites of the cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Oh, the last right. one is the calcium fortified soy milk. <laughs> yes. So I think we often associate calcium with dairy products, but actually there's a lot of non-dairy based products that you can get your calcium from as well. But, so what's the answer? So this is the slide. It seems like my um, calcium content for the tofu has disappeared, but it's actually oh. 400 milligram. So really? In compared to all of these six products, the ones that contain the most um, mm. calcium is your tofu and your mm. fortified milk. And obviously with fortified milk, they try to add as much as they can in the product. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, good sources is always your dairy, um, your cheeses. And also if you like canned fish like sardines or salmon, those are great sources of calcium as well. Mm. Um, with almonds, it's actually quite low in calcium, but it's always good to have if you're not um, eating enough through other means. Mm. Oh, right. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, tofu, so I'm not very really keen on tofu, but um, where does it come? Is it a vegetable, obviously? Yes, it comes from a... Tofu has actually come from soybeans. Soybeans, okay. Yeah, so they press the soybeans to turn into tofu. So do you have to cook it? Um, no, I think the short answer is no, but it's regularly cooked as a hot dish. Um, some people do it as a curry. Some people like to um, make it as a salad, like a tofu salad or um, cook it up in a soup. Um, I think Elizabeth or Lachlan, I remember you. What, what did you want to say? Uh, has, is it high in fat? Sorry, my Wi-Fi is not very good today. It took me so long to finally I'm on. That's all right. <laughs> um, is it high in fat? Tofu? No, it's actually low in fat. Okay. Oh. Hi, yeah, sorry if I float in and out. Sorry. <laughs> Claire. Yes, Irene. Uh, you know, when I go to the uh, Chinese grocery, there's a whole section in the tofu. Yes. There's so many different type, classic, seal, or blah, blah, blah. Which one's the best? Food They're all the good. There's, right. um, it's, it's up to your um, preference in taste. They're all good sources of calcium. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So in this slide, it talks about the common food sources of calcium. So I did mention your dairy products, sardines, nuts, and also your green leafy vegetables as well. If you're wondering how much do you need on the right hand side over here, it talks about um, around from 1000 milligram to 1300 milligram. Mm. Um, the best way to determine that is if you're having on average three to four servings of dairy or calcium containing products a day. Um, so what are the risks with not having enough calcium in the diet? Very increased risk of losing um, calcium from your bones causing osteoporosis and also therefore increased risk of fractures. Any questions on this slide? No? All good. Okay, so what are the non-dairy sources of calcium? Um, so other than the calcium fortified plant milks, next week in our supermarket session, I'll teach you how to find out in the package where to see whether they fortified with calcium. Um, other than that, your green leafy vegetables, your Asian greens, your broccoli, spinach all contain a bit of calcium. Um, so if you're a fan of tuna and you don't have much dairy in your diet, John West actually has a John West um, calcium enriched tuna 
um, recently that they've released into the supermarket. So that's something maybe you can give it a go. And that's the one at the bottom down here. Mm -hmm. Another thing they that do that. Sorry, I must add it to my order. How I'm, I'm always a bit dubious when they say enriched. Do, how can you be sure? Is it just by looking at what's inside and it says uh, more calcium? Yeah, so other than, so for example, John West, they have that clean on the outside of the label. Yeah. Um, also in the ingredients label, um, in the ingredients list, it does list out um, how they fortify it. Uh, okay. So in the John West calcium rich tuna case, they have um, bone powder that they have. Um, kind of powdered up to add into the can. Mm. Bone, bone from what? Um, fish bone. Mm. All right. Okay. Mm. So other than calcium, having a vitamin D is very important. Um, it mm. assort, assists with the absorption of calcium into our bones. And best food sources is salmon or your fortified products, such as your butter. Um, and dairy products. So usually your GP might re recommend to do a vitamin D test. And um, the, however, even though food sources is a great source of vitamin D, the best source is actually the sunlight. Ah, yeah, I was about to ask, yes. Yeah, I, so, I, take, I take vitamin D tablets, yes. So, yeah, yeah. Because, because these days we tend to, obviously because of the, the known reasons, we tend to shy away from the sun. Yes, because right. it's bad for our skin and all that. So yeah, I think it's yeah. yeah. So anyone kind of feel like they they're out in the sun a lot or not in the sun enough? Oh, Probably yeah. not enough these days. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And covered in clothes. That's mm. right. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. slide is very good just just check just to check how much sun you're getting and, and whether it's enough. Um, obviously, wear sunscreen and um, a hat and sunglasses where you can just to protect our skin as well. So now that it's winter, we require around two to three hours over one week. So it could be from when you do your morning walks or afternoon walks, doing some gardening in the gardening. So over two to three hours in one week would get your vitamin D requirements. Okay, yeah. well, that's good. Oh, that's good. Yes, and, but uh, it's also um, everybody... It's positive. <laughs> that's positive yeah. well, I was I always yeah. think that we don't do enough <laughs> yeah and so does every, that work if you're clothed um, as I long as you expose walking. your face and your hands oh face and hands oh right yeah oh, and even good. better if you lift your arms up you get even more surface area oh you mean have bare arms yeah that's right yeah. so for example if I do this Oh, on, on the soft part of your arm. Yes. Anywhere. Yeah. Where oh, anywhere. Skin. Yeah, sure. I heard uh, that as we get older, we don't absorb as much vitamin D with the, from the sun. Yeah, that's right. Age. I was about to comment that as we age, our body does not absorb as efficiently. Oh. So it's always good to check with your GP whether you need that vitamin D supplementation. There's no harm in taking it. Um. Other than winter, over the summer that we're coming to spring very soon, you just need three minutes before 10 a.m. or after 3 p.m. because we don't want to be in the sun during when the sun is too hot and there's a lot of UV rays. So just three okay. minutes every day. Right. Well, that's All right. So other than the um, dietary and also the sun contributing to vitamin D, there are things that can make us lose vitamin D and not absorb it as well. Mm. Um, as, which impacts our bone health. So not exercising or moving enough, smoking, have very high intake of fiber. If you really love your vegetables and fruit and your whole grains, sometimes too much can do a bit of harm as well. Having too much salt in your diet, such as your mm. processed <laughs> foods, your added salt and your takeaway foods can cause calcium to lose from your bones. Having lots of caffe caffeinated drinks, so more than six cups of like coffee, cola or energy drinks, but also tea to a lesser extent. Too much alcohol and having a very low body weight can also impact your bone health as well. Excuse me, can you explain yeah. what you mean by low body weight? Low body weight as in um, 
your BMI perhaps is in the underweight range. Oh, okay. So for older Australians, if you're around 65 or above, the BMI range you should be at is around 22 to 27. Okay, thanks. Um, in terms of calculation for that, um, I won't go into too much detail. You can feel free to ask, go on the internet to um, calculate your own BMI or ask your GP if you're not sure. Yeah, I'm interested in the um, in the uh, high intake of fibre. I hadn't, I'm okay on, on all the other ones, but um, gee whiz, most of the food we have is um, pretty high in fibre, I think, isn't it? And... Um, 50 grams doesn't seem a lot. 50, on average, I think Australians is consuming around 10 to 15, 15 grams, so one five rather than 50, five zero. Um, yeah. in, the, in just a bit later, we will go through what foods contain fibre and what a usual day might look like with good fibre intake. So, Peter, that might give you a good idea of where you are. Um, at. Yeah, I, I, I have a glass of um, psyllium husk. Yeah. Every morning. Uh, two, two tablespoons in milk, but that's pretty high, isn't it, in fibre? Um, yes, it is. It's a great source of fibre. Um, in just a bit, we'll talk about how much you might need every single day and you can determine whether you're yeah. having a bit too much or not. Yeah. yeah, I'd be interested in that one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so what does a day might look like with all this into consideration? So for breakfast, you might have your oatmeal with... Um, a glass of with the milk, or if you prefer a plant-based option, um, the fortified milk. For lunch, you might have your salmon, um, canned salmon sandwich with a bit of cream cheese and a bit of side salad in your sandwich. As an afternoon snack, you might have a bit of almonds. And then at dinner, you might have a tofu stir fry with spinach or rice, um, if, you prefer, if you enjoy tofu or want to give that a go. And then for dessert, a yogurt, um, is a great source of calcium for your bone as well. <coughs> so now we're moving on to joint health. If you have any questions on bone health, maybe we can touch back on that at the very end. So what do we mean by when you have good joint health? Um, you might have heard a lot of things. There's this special diet for arthritis. This is good. Avoid this. In general, there's no diet that can cure arthritis, but there is foods that can help relieve your symptoms and um, promote good joint health. And those considerations include having a healthy, um, achieve a healthy weight, having enough protein in your body to support your muscle, eating a balanced diet, including... Sorry, five... Claire, just the first, achieve a healthy weight gain, meaning uh, having a wealth gain, yeah. A healthy weight, as um, I think this slide is more regards to if you're underweight, maybe a healthy weight gain oh, okay. or a healthy weight. Sorry, you might have had, had should have had a, um, a dash over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good yes. catch, Franco. <laughs> <laughs> um, so having a healthy balanced diet, including the five food groups, so your fruit and vegetables, your whole grains, having healthy fats, which I'll touch in just one moment. Um, including beans and lentils in your diet, as well as having fish at least twice a week. This is kind of what a Mediterranean style looks like, having good sources of healthy fats and a lot of um, fish in your diet does promote good joint health. Uh, like you mentioned the other last week, that one, uh, one, one tin of, of tinned salmon or tuna, that would do, that's a one serve, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah. If you have salmon in your dinner, for example, and then have a tin tuna around once or twice a week in your lunch sandwich, yes. you're on right track with um, your fish intake. What, what size tin do you recommend? Um, the normal small one, so not the big one. Um, 95, so 95, 95 grams. 95 there's, three, grams. there's three sizes. There's 110, 220 or 210 and 440 in salmon. Good question. Let me grab it right now. So this one over here. What's it say on it? This one says Looks 95 like... grams, just like Frankie said. Uh-huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Claire, what, yeah, does, sorry. what does mean by other cold feet, water feet? What kind of this fish? 
Um, cold water fish, so um, your deep sea fish. Oh. <coughs> yeah. All right. So when we're talking about healthy fats, it's important for joint health. What do we think about all these food sources? Do you think they're all healthy? What, what do we think? No, some of them are. I'm only on my iPhone. What's in the jar? So that's oh. your coconut oil. And then oh. we have butter. We have your cheeses. We have your fish or salmon. We have your extra virgin olive oil and then your avocado. Yeah, there's about four of them there, I'd say. Four of them? Avocado. So which four, Peter? I, I would say the avocado, the olive oil, and the uh, fish. Is that down the bottom centre? Yes. Yeah. And um, what's that one up in the left again, the top left corner? Butter. Butter. Well, no, thanks. So one, two, three. <laughs> three. So um, you think three or four? Yeah. I, I, I think olive oil ahead of coconut oil. It's uh, almost a photo finish, but I think uh, olive oil gets it. <laughs> Coconut oil's got coconut, coconut oil has cholesterol, doesn't it? Coconut Which oil one? has a lot of saturated fat. So that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, three there, three for me. So when we talk about healthy fats, there are two main ones we want to um, know about: your polyunsaturated fats and your monounsaturated fats. These are the fats that can help reduce your um, bad cholesterol. So yeah, like your LDLs as well as increase your good cholesterols, your HDLs. So if you've been to the GPs in the past and they've done a cholesterol profile with you before, you, you might see in that pathology report, these LDL or HDL um, words. What? So this is what it means. Um, and I think some of you did talk about food, cholesterol in food. Um, the there's actually very small amounts of cholesterol in food and generally it's more related to the fat rather than the cholesterol that's impacting, impacting your cholesterol levels. So your common sources of polyunsaturated fats is like your salmon, your nuts, your soybean or soy milk, um, your chia seeds, like your seeds that you might add into your porridge or smoothies. Um, sunflower, canola, soybean or grapeseed oil, or if you use something like a um, flora proactive um, kind of spread, as well as um, omega-3 enriched eggs. Um, these types of eggs are actually, um, it, it's kind of depends on the supermarket. It is out there, um, but you have to dig a bit if you want to, if you want to have an omega-3 enriched eggs. Yeah, do the, do, do the major um, uh, Woolworths and Coles, do they have it, I wonder? Yes, I think that some of them do, but perhaps more major supermarkets might have them. So if you live in, I'm not sure which area of Kurungai we're at, um, I would think perhaps like the Gordon Woolworths might be a bit too small to have um, eggs, but feel free to check it out when you next do your grocery shop. So oh, what are the what are the eggs enriched with? And they're enriched with so what oh. happens is when they um are what's the word when they're taking care of the chooks, they provide oh. them with um food that is that has a lot of omega three so your flax seeds and seeds so they feed them food that is higher in omega three and this causes the eggs to have a higher omega three compared to normal eggs. They're better than free range. And well, did you did you say that that helps lower the LDL? Yes, that's right. Thank you. What about what about what about the uh, organic egg? Um, in terms of eggs, that's a very good question. Um, all eggs nutrition nutritionally, they're all very similar. Um, it's um, the organic eggs and caged eggs or free range eggs. It's just the way that um, chickens are um, farmed. Um, but in terms of the nutrition profile, it's very insignificant difference. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So you're, you also have your monounsaturated mono fats. So there's your extra virgin olive oil, your avocado, your almond, peanuts and cashews. And if you don't have dairy, you can also use your olive oil spread. So for example, like Nutlex. 
So the, 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 that Natalex on the picture, that would be like instead of um, margarine or butter, something like that. Yeah, that that's right. It is, it is a margarine, isn't it? It's, and it's got the olive oil added into it. Uh, is, that ha is that harmful for our macula? Is margarine harmful for our macula in our eyes as we age? Um, no. I don't okay. Know. Yeah. What is harmful to um, our macula? Because there is um, some food I thought canola connections, was. isn't there? I think if you do don't have know. a lot of processed foods in your diet or too much salt and too much sugar, it's harmful to your health in general. I understood for the macula, it was the, um, the fact that the, the liquid oil had to be solidified. I think that was the issue that I've heard. Mm. So, is which it, means margarine, basically. Is it not canola that causes macula? I think the, I think the research in this area is still quite weak. So... Um, in the normal portions of margarine that you might use in your day-to-day -day basis, it, um, the current evidence doesn't really suggest it cause macular issues. Um, but that's something, obviously, the research is all, always evolving and I'd be interested to hear what the results of further research would be as well. But this is a good discussion topic. Always question what's the recommendations and whether it's suitable for you. So that's something you can do to include a bit more healthy fats um, is including um, more fish into your diet at least two to three times a week. Having a handful of nuts as a snack. Um, if you like to have oats or a smoothie sometime, maybe adding two teaspoons of seeds, for example, chia seeds into it. Cooking with sunflower, canola, soybean, grapeseed oil or olive oil. Um, or you can use, if you like peanut butter, use like a 100% natural nut spread. So these are all really good ideas on how to include healthy fats into your diet. Does peanut anyone? Oh, peanut butter is good for you. Oh, yeah. oh, nice to hear. <laughs> yes, Elizabeth, what's your question here? Is, um, so you've got for cooking sunflower, canola, and soy. I mean, I cook with extra virgin olive oil. Is that not good? No, extra virgin olive oil is a good source of healthy fats. It's just, there's so much you can do. These are just some suggestions. Thank you. Anyone else feel like they um, might include some of these into their diet today from today <laughs> onwards? Well, I have I a few of those already in my diet. Yeah. Quite, quite yeah. a few bit. Mm. Go oh, on you, Franco. Good. <laughs> So yeah. that's good. I feel I feel I feel good. Yeah, so what does this all look yeah. like? So for breakfast, you might have your rolled oats with a bit of chia seeds and a bit of nuts with your yogurt and a bit of fruit. At lunch, you might have some poached eggs if you like to have a brunch style lunch. Um, and then at dinner time, you might have some grilled salmon with some vegetables and rice and then add a bit of olive oil on top or cook with it. And then as a snack, you might have some nuts and seeds. Yes, Elizabeth. <coughs> Was that a question? May I ask, how do you cook chia? How do you, like, how do you use chia seed? Is it from the packet or you've got to cook it? Um, chia seeds. Um, chia. You need, yeah. If you cook it, for example, when you cook oats, you whether you cook it with milk or cook it with water, you can add the chia seeds with it. So it puffs up. Mm. So it needs a bit of liquid in order to puff up and, um, um, for it to taste nice. Oh, so you wouldn't just use it straight out of the packet on your oats? Um, as long as you mix, mix it in well in your oats and maybe give it a couple of minutes just to soak up the fluid for it to puff up. Thank you. So other than why is healthy fats important in the diet, why is it important to reduce our unhealthy fats? So saturated fats or your trans fats can actually increase inflammation in our body. It increases your cholesterol levels and is also linked with obesity. That it is a risk factor, and then all these are risk factor for chronic diseases like heart disease and also diabetes. 
So when we talk about unhealthy fats, these are some of the foods that might contain it. So your animal, anything containing like your animal fats, such as butter, ghee, lard, um, fats on your skin, the fats on meats of the skin. So skin on chicken or the excess fat on meats, processed meat, um, your discretionary foods, for example, your croissants, your pastry, your cakes, ice cream. Sometimes there is um, saturated fat added to this. Um, coconut oil, which we've mentioned a bit earlier, does contain um, saturated fats as well. Palm oil, full fat dairy, sour cream, um, cream and mayonnaise, all of these foods contain um, unhealthy fats. Um, I guess the question is, you're feeling a bit concerned, oh, I do have a bit of this in our diet. Is it, should I eliminate it completely? No, you don't have to eliminate it completely, but it's always good to switch to the healthier fat alternative. Did we have any questions on the slide? Um, no, sounds like- to, uh, Well, there's a lot to absorb, but uh, I can't, I certainly have some of those. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, in the but, next few slides, I'll give you some suggestions on how to switch uh, from your unhealthy fats to your healthy fats. Uh, John had a question in the chat. So what foods should I avoid as I have arthritis? Um, I think I missed that from 10 minutes ago. Sorry, John. Um, so this is all a bit um, foods that can hopefully give you a bit of idea. Um, so, so what can we do? Um, you can choose lean meats if you have meat in your diet. Um, and also remove the visible fat. So for example, if you have your regular mints, go for an extra lean mints. If you'd like to have um, skin on your chicken, maybe go for a skinless um, option. Uh, sausages, maybe go for a kangaroo sausage. It depends on what, um, if you've tried that before. The reason for that is kangaroo is naturally a bit leaner. Um, or you can go for lentils instead of meat just to get a bit of plant-based protein into your diet. Does anyone already kind of choose extra lean mints um, when they go to the supermarket? Yeah. No, yeah. always. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yes, all, all, always. I find it's pretty pricey, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's what we do for our health. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, something, something like a steak of about 40 k's a kg or something like that out of one of the major supermarkets. But I always look for the, um, the pricier ones and, um, uh, and you can see that it looks pretty lean. You know, the price does, um, is an indicator. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the way it is with a lot of um, um, lean, with meats. It does have yeah. that extra processing method. So that's why it's a bit cheap and um, more expensive, but there are also cheaper lean meat options. For example, mm -hmm. you can go for your um, fish instead, going for lean ham, roast beef or chicken or turkey, as well as eggs. So you don't necessarily have to go for your red meats in order to get your proteins. No. So this slide does suggest to limit your deli meats, such as your salami or um, your cabana and your Devon meats and maybe go for the options on the right instead. Um, Claire, the one where you've got lean ham, roast beef, chicken, turkey, is that when it's a whole chicken roasted? Yes. All right, so, how about the ham or the beef? Because you don't get those roasted like that, do you? I didn't um, know. No, so mm, when we talk about cold. lean ham, perhaps I'm more talking about your leg hams rather than your overly processed ham that you buy in a oh, packet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get it from the deli, maybe the better ham. Yeah, that's right. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So another way you can um, reduce your um, unsatur um, your saturated fats in your diet is going for reduced fat options. So going for um, Greek yogurt, um, your light milk, or your reduced fat cheese. So if you have like to have cheese with your crackers, maybe go for a light or a reduced fat option. Hey, it's the one I have. <laughs> you, excellent. You're already on the way. So that's a bit yeah. about um, <laughs> joint health. Did we have mm. any questions from then, from this section? No, all good. 
Okay. So feel free if you have any questions, we can talk about it at the end. So is there okay. a difference between Greek style and Greek yogurt? Yes. So Greek style yogurt um, has cream added to it to make it creamier. Uh huh. Whereas Greek style is it's an authentic way it's made, so it's strained and it's just pure milk. That's the Greek one. Yes, that oh, one. Right. Thank you. Claire. Yes, Irene. I I uh, ate yogurt every day in the morning. Yes. But I find every day when I open the the lid, there's some uh, liquid watery on top of the what is it? This liquid is come from the what? I don't know why the a little bit watery there. Yeah, that. Do you have a Greek yogurt, Irene? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so the way that Greek yogurt is, it is strained um, from the milk. So it naturally has a bit of water yeah, when yeah. it settles. So if that happens, just use your spoon, move it, um, mix it in. It's not harmful at all. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, it's very normal for that to happen. Oh, it's, it's normal, yeah. Because yes. I have exactly what you're on the, on the, on the screen. <laughs> yeah, that's very normal. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> So we're talking a little bit about bowel health. So when we're talking about bowel health, we're talking about um, fiber, you're talking about your bowel motions, and that's something that we might need to be more wary of as we do age. So why is it important to have good bowel health? Um, it keeps your bowel healthy, bowel motions regular, as well as prevent um, more chronic um, issues such as diverticular disease. Um, bowel cancer or other bowel related conditions as well. When we talk about bowel, there's three main things that affect your bowel motions. The fiber that we eat, the fluids that we drink, so mainly water preferably, as well as the amount of movement, physical activity we do. So these three things affect how well our bowel um, functions. But other than these three things, there are other things that might cause your um, impact your bowel health. So the medications, your hormones, if you do have an underlying medical history, as well as any food intolerances. Mm. So what are the benefits of dietary fiber? Um, I'll talk about what I mean by dietary fiber in just one moment. Um, it does reduce your risk of developing of type two diabetes, have more stable sugar levels if you do have diabetes lower your cholesterol levels. It supports the growth of healthy gut bacteria, improves your appetite um, to control weight management if that's a goal you might have, Regular, regulate your bowel motions, as well as reduce your risk of diverticular disease, hemorrhoids, and also bowel cancer. Mm. So when I talk about dietary fiber, it's actually a type of carbohydrate and the reason why it's good for our bowel health is it, re it resists digestion in our stomach. So it travels to our large, small and large intestine. And there's actually three different types of fiber. And briefly, it's soluble, insoluble and resistant starch. You might have heard of these terms before. So when I mean about soluble fiber, its function is to absorb water and slows digestion. So if you're feeling a bit constipated, sometimes it's good to have a bit more soluble fiber in your diet because it can soften your bowel motion. It's found in the flesh of your fruit and vegetables, your oats, your lentils, legumes, and also barley. So your insoluble fiber is when it adds bulk um, and also pushes the bowel motion through the bowel. And these types of food is commonly found in your whole grains, your wheat, Bran. So if you have something like all bran, for example, that's insoluble fiber, vegetables, fruit, and the vegetable and fruit skin. So if you eat the apple skin on the apple or you don't peel your fruit and vegetable, um, so that means you're getting good sources of insoluble fiber. And then the last part of fiber is your resistant starch. This is the type of fiber that feeds the gut bacteria that we might have heard about. Um, and this is often found in your ripe banana, your cooked and cooled potatoes, rice and pastas, and also your chickpeas. 
So if you like to um, leave a bit of potato, pasta or rice um, after cooking a big bunch, it actually changes the structure of these foods to have more fiber in them. Any questions here? Can you this explain that, Claire? Sorry, what do you mean? If you've cooked it and then leave it, the fiber increases? Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. And then when you have it the next day, I thought generally rice you shouldn't have the next day if you've kept it in the fridge. No, um, as long as you have it within around three days and they're safe oh, okay. to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you might wonder what if I reheat it will it kind mm. of bounce back to its original form no the fiber in there stays after it's been cooled okay so can you repeat that again that was a, the, the question that Anne asked is there a, sorry with resistant mm -hmm. starch if you cook it and leave it what does it do so what, once you cooked and cooled potato, rice, and pasta, yes. it increases the fiber content more specifically ah. resistant starch Okay. Yeah. So if you um, feel like um, you're not having a bit of enough fiber in your diet, this is something you can consider in incorporate into your diet. And you mentioned uh, wheat bran. Is yes. oat bran just as good or not? Yes, it's just as good. Yep. Elizabeth, did you have a question? Um, the, the words resistant starch, does that have anything to do with diabetes? Um, does that cause like as uh, I've stopped having all all um all potatoes actually because um and I don't have a lot of carbs um but um I'm healthy I've got to but the thing is um should, should I should go back onto it should I because I have diabetes yeah resistant starch is actually good for controlling your blood sugars as well if you do have diabetes because it's naturally higher in sugar and it has lower GI. So that's maybe okay. GI is that something you might have heard of. Yes. Um, so it actually is better for diabetes. Yes. My, my diabetes is is good level anyway, but um, I might bring back some potatoes into my diet. <laughs> yes. You maybe can do like a potato salad and that's cooking and cooling your potatoes. And you can make gnocchi after you've cooked um, the, the cooled potatoes. When you've got leftover potatoes, you yeah. used to make these gnocchi up. Yeah, so that's something you can reincorporate in your diet. Does this, was this, um, <coughs> does this kind of self-explanatory? Um, was there any more questions on this slide? I know it's a bit a new concept maybe for some of you. Yeah, I've, been, so. I've been told that basmati rice is good. Is yeah. there much difference between all the different rices? Yeah, that's a very good question. So basmati, um, the different rices, the difference is the glycemic index level. So I'm not sure you've heard of GI, glycemic index. Yeah. This is more associated with um, if you do have diabetes or insulin resistance. Um, <clears throat> it, the higher the GI, the bigger impact it has on the way your sugar reacts to the food. So basmati is actually lower GI. So it's a good um, rice if you do have um, blood sugar problems or you'd like to feeling satisfied a bit longer, basmati rice is also a good option. And how does that compare with brown rice? Yeah, brown rice is higher in fiber compared to basmati rice, but it's actually more medium to high GI. But if you do not have di issues with diabetes, this is GI is not really something you need to be too careful about. Have you heard about the red? Uh -huh. I'd like to ask a question because I've got, I would just like to ask about um, the cooling of potato and vegetables. Now today I've cooked early um, and so my meal's cooked. So if I reheat that, you saying that the potato is just as good for me as having it um, uh, cooked and cooling if you yes. reheat it again? Oh, yeah. good. So to cook your meal ahead in the morning for the day is not a bad idea. Yeah, that's mainly with regards to potato, rice and pastas, not with your vegetables. Uh -huh. All right. So uh, do your vegetables deteriorate much in that time? No, not really. Uh huh. So you can do your potatoes well, first, perhaps. <laughs> no, well, I've I've cooked potatoes, carrots, pumpkin, beans, cauliflower, uh, and a Brussels sprout, 
and um, and so are there any of those that I should save and cook just before I eat rather than do them ahead of time? No, um, I think the mainly the main types of um, things that you can cook ahead of time that has better nutritional benefits is the potato, rice, and pasta. Um, with vegetables, you can cook them anytime you like. Um, we do talk about it in the week four, so in two weeks' time, our cooking methods to optimize the nutrition in your meals. So maybe we can touch back on that a bit later. Uh -huh. And with these types of dietary fiber, with diverticular disease, uh, I, I just don't handle nuts. And uh, but so I just wonder, uh, I seem to think that that first one you mentioned, I'm only on an iPhone, so I'm having trouble reading it. The, I oh know the second one, the one with the peels and all of that, uh, that's not so good for people with diverticulitis, diverticular disease and prone to diverticulitis. No, isn't? so in with the evidence in diverticular disease, um, mm. there's no really real restriction on what you can or cannot eat. Some people do find that nuts and seeds might cause a bit of symptoms, but everyone's mm. very different. Mm. Um, in general, we do recommend uh, having a lot of fiber in your diet just to ensure mm. good bowel motions and prevent constipation. Mm. Mm. Yes. Irene, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, what about the red rice? Is it equivalent the fiber to brown rice? Um, red rice is very similar in fiber content. Yeah. Um, it's although it's a bit more difficult to cook compared to brown rice. I would say it's a bit more tough. Yeah. Um, and it's more difficult to digest. So I wouldn't perhaps not recommend having too much of it because it is a bit more difficult to digest. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Oh, so good. other than, so what are the sources of dietary fiber? So you have your oats, you have your psyllium. So Peter did, Peter's gone, but Peter did mention his psyllium husk in the morning that he has. Um, your legumes, your lentils, um, your whole grain products, so your whole meal bre bread or whole grain bread, your fruits and veg vegetables. Peter's back. V Peter, you mentioned your psyllium. So this slide talks about your psyllium in your um, in the diet. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the only thing is um, I have two tablespoons in a glass of milk. Um, you reckon that's too much? Plus all the rest of the fibre through the day. Um, I think in general, you should be fine with two tablespoons. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. I'm yeah, not sure sorry. what's your diet wise um, the rest of the day, um, but mm. two tablespoons seems quite reasonable to me. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. Make this, I make this my last question because I don't want to hold the time, but being gluten intolerant, I can't, I can't tolerate oats. And, um, and I have quinoa flakes how does quinoa flakes compare with uh rolled oats for fiber no. and, yeah very and good question glycemic yeah. um quinoa is actually a soluble type of soluble fiber so that's a good um alternative to oats if you don't tolerate that it's also very high in um dietary fiber so i think that's a good option you're having there oh good thank you right so what can you do um, today to add more fiber into your diet? If, you, if not already, go for your whole meal, whole grain, breads and cereals. Um, maybe do something like Peter, adding psyllium husk to your day in the morning. You can add it to your cereal. You can add it to a smoothie or generally just mix it with water. Um, adding, stirring some lentils or legumes into your salad if you have anything like that. Um, Anyone like to have bolognese, for example, as a dinner, a dish? Who, anyone ha likes to have bolognese pasta? Yes, we do. Yeah, so a suggestion, I'm, for example, I might have, rather than having 100% of just mince, maybe half the mince and half lentils. That still gives you the same texture, um, but adds more fiber um, into the meal. Yeah, we usually put red lentils in. Yeah. Excellent. So what else you can do having some nuts as a snack instead of don't peel your vegetables where you can. So your carrots, your zucchini or um, what other vegetables? Um, just ensure you keep your vegetable skins on as well as fruits. 
um, and perhaps at least have two serves of fruit every single day, then that means you're on track with your fiber intake. Just with all the, the seeds, I'm a bit worried about the uh, diverticulitis. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I can't either. No, no way we can get away with having seeds and, and not getting pains. Um, I think it's all up to individual tolerance. The general recommendation is you can have nuts and seeds into your diet, mm. but my, for example, Beverly thinks that she's more sensitive towards nuts and seeds, then perhaps you can have grounded seeds instead. So mm -hmm. um, rather than having the whole seeds. Right. Also today, mm -hmm. I, I cooked up some um, uh, tomato, oh no, some onions and I threw a tomato in. I find if I cook them up and boil them in water uh, and really make them soft, that I can have um, tomato skins and tomato seeds. Right. And I've got also, I also diced some cabbage and put in that, and I grow herbs. And I'm mm. no, not really good with fresh herbs unless they're really, really finely ground. Uh, but I'm fine with them cooked. And uh, so I've got that as a, a side dish as well. I tried, yeah. I cooked for a couple of days today. So. That's a my dish for everyone. They cooked cooked in water to make them soft and then grind them up with seeds is the only way I can cope with them. So how much do we need? So for men on average, at least 30 grams and at least 25 grams for women. In next week's supermarket tour, I'll show you how to read how many fib much fiber is in a product. Um, so um, you can have an idea of how much fiber you're eating. But an example of what a day with 30 grams of fiber might look like is having oats in the morning with some seeds and berries or your chia seeds, um, having a salad and chicken wrap for lunch, for example. For snacks, you might have a bit of Rivita or um, Vita wheat um, crackers with a bit of hummus, having a piece of fruit and maybe yogurt as well. And then at dinner time, you might have some, if you're like going for a vegetarian based dish, going for some quinoa, black beans, sweet potato and raw vegetables. But in general, we're looking for half of your plate with vegetables at dinner time, then you're getting a lot of fiber in your diet. Yep. So another tip is if you feel like you're not having enough fiber in your diet, um, I suggest you to introduce it gradually because having too much fiber at once can make your gut feel a bit uncomfortable. So just maybe introduce one at a time, maybe once, one or two across a week. Um, ensure you're drinking enough fluid um, is very important other than fiber as well. Um, I think Elizabeth had a question. You were raising your hand. Yes. Yes, I would, I would like to ask. Um, in all the nuts and things that we've had, why um, is sunflower seeds, why are they not included? Because they are a fantastic um, uh, healthy thing for bowel movement. Seriously, yeah. if you have a tiny, tiny little amount, every, I used to, you know, it used to be really bad long ago, but I have a little tiny hand, little mouthful every yeah. day. And i tell you what, you know, you, it's no problems, anything. So sunflower seeds. Yeah, that, that's a great source of fiber as well. There's a whole long list of foods that you can include in a diet. I can't, I'm so passionate about this area. I can go on for weeks and years about this, but then you guys will be bored of what I'm saying. So these are just some small suggestions. Um, just kind of like how Peter enjoys his um, silly and hus in the morning. Elizabeth, you can enjoy your sunflower seeds. We're all very different. So um, these are some suggestions, but by all means, go investigate and explore what types well, of fiber foods you can introduce in your diet. It's not just me. I mean, my grandson had constipation, so I'd give him a teaspoon of, it, of sunflower seeds and he'd chew them up and say he's got no problems anymore. And so <laughs> it is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so if we have, if we enjoy drinking juice, for example, maybe go for eating a piece of fruit or the vegetable instead of having the juiced up version. Because when you juice, when you have juice, you lose the fiber in it. So that's something to think about as well. So mm. this week we're setting another smart goal for ourselves. I know we've gone through a few things, 
Um, we did talk about calcium, vitamin D, um, healthy fats, unhealthy fats, and then we talked about fiber. What's one thing that maybe you can set yourself for the next week? Mm -hmm. So when I say smart goals for those who didn't mm. who didn't join us last week, it's just to ensure that these goals are realistic for you, they're accurate, they're attainable, and give yourself a bit of a goal and timeline. So for example, you might say, I will cook with extra virgin olive oil with dinner, um, with my dinner vegetables every night, starting from perhaps tomorrow night. Um, you would include at least two serves of fish for dinner starting from tomorrow night. You might use lean mints for your shepherd's pie recipe um, instead, or you might say, I'll add two teaspoons of chia seeds in my porridge starting from tomorrow morning. So these are some examples of goals we can set ourselves. And then in next week, we can revisit on how you go with your goals, just so we can start building some, building some healthy habits. Mm. Just right. Yes, excuse me. I'm just interested in um, you saying I'll cook, um, I'll cook with extra virgin olive oil with dinner vegetables every night. What are you saying? Add more veg, uh, oil on the vegetables? Is that what you're saying? If you don't already, if you don't use extra virgin olive oil in your cooking, maybe that's something you can do. But if you're already doing it, then maybe you can work on a different goal. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, I just, so it sounds like you're already doing that. With dinner vegetables. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just making sure your your goal is very specific rather than making it too broad. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then so yeah. next week is our supermarket tour where I'll bring you through virtually the different aisles of the supermarket. We can't physically, I can't physically bring you to the supermarket. So it'll be interesting to see what we need to mm. think about um, in the different aisles, as well as reading the label. Um, I'll remind you at the beginning, but maybe perhaps prepare a cereal box or a tub of yogurt in the session, um, at the start of the session, because we're gonna learn how to read the labels of the packages. Mm -hmm. so, and that's kind okay. of wraps up our week this Thank week. You. Did we have any more questions or anything I'd like to clarify about? Yes. Yes, please. Um, with the yogurt, I've only just noticed that the can, the pot that I bought this week, doesn't have calcium mentioned. Does that mean mm. there's no calcium in it? I think the last one I had did mention calcium. It yeah, was about that's... 350. Well, I thought it was quite high. Um, so calcium is not mandatory in some labels. The, uh, there's a few things that's mandatory in labels, such as your calories, your protein, your carbohydrates, um, and your fats. Mm. Anything else other than that is not mandatory. So it may not necessarily mm. indicate there's no calcium in the product. If it is a yogurt, then is it a cow's milk yogurt, may I ask? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it would contain calcium. Right, but you don't, they won't tell you how much. Yeah, that's, an, yeah. yeah. Right. The but, last one but, was at Tamar Valley, and I, that was the 350. And this one yeah. is the one from Aldi, which seems pretty good, seems about op, um, equal to the Chobani, yeah. I feel. On oh. average, yogurt per a cup, for example, does contain around 300 milligrams of calcium. Does it? Right. Yeah. Thank Any you. other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. I just. I, I wanted I I want to cook um uh, something I haven't cooked for years and that's a brown rice pudding cooked on milk and I'm just trying to think what could I use for sweetener instead of sugar that's natural got any ideas I thought I'd throw some raisins in it but then you've got to watch the sugar content on dried fruit anyone have Is any suggestions any for Beverly perhaps. Is there anything natural that's better for you than sugar that's a sweetener? I think maybe <laughs> would adding some fruit in it or fruit yeah. juice. I know dates have a lot of sugar, but they um, I'm not quite sure why it's better, except that they do have also a lot of fiber. So all right. Yes. Okay. Dates that's, are very well, I think so. 
I think so Sultanas so have less than sugar than dates. <laughs> I think if uh -huh. we're talking about but natural I sugars, I think your fruit is the number one source for some natural sugars. Um, if I'll you need experiment. to have juice, then maybe go for juice. No, but it if it's just you. part of your recipe, then I think small amounts would be okay. Thank you. I'll experiment. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful today. Wonderful. <laughs> I hope that was not too overwhelming. I know there was a lot of question and a lot of content. If you did have any questions after this session, I am very more than happy to um, answer them. You can perhaps email Robin if you want to have my contact details. I am happy to answer any questions you have from today. Um, but I look forward to next week where we kind of go through the supermarket. If you're doing a bit of online um, grocery shopping as well, I'll be going through some tips on how to do that as well. Claire, would you mind doing a bit of homework for us, please? <laughs> yes. <laughs> would you mind looking into the oils, seeing if you can find out the oils that are, uh, might be better for those of us who are inclined to uh, have developing macular problems and mm -hmm. the oils that are better and worse for that sort of thing? I believe that there is, there is something known by some people. Okay, so I'll I'll do the literature search for you, Beverly, and I'll give oh, you some you. answers next week. Thank you. <laughs> thank it might you, help Claire. other people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Claire. That was fantastic. I guess. Yes, thank you very uh, much, Claire. No yes, worries. Thank you. Lovely yeah. to see you all again. Yes, Peter. Thank did you? Very much. Bye. Oh. Good. Bye. Thanks, okay. Robin. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. I'll see you all Bye. next week. Thank thank you. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. week. Thank Keep you. safe, everyone. Stay safe, yeah. everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Franco. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, we're gone. Robin,